Successful or significant? Successful in the world or significant for the world that is to come? Well, let's see. The year's about 1940, and Philip, um, he's a UK boy, United Kingdom. He is the only child, and he will tell you that his family owned a bakery. It was a, it was a break even at best. I mean, they did okay, they made ends meet, but you're only going so far so fast. But if you were to ask Philip, man, tell me, tell me what your life was like. He would say, man, grammar school, high school, tumultuous. He said, man, it was a shipwreck. He said, well, how? And the reporter that's talked to him said, well, how could, that be? how could that be? He said, man, you don't understand. I'm the quintessential introvert. He said, wait a minute, Philip, you're an introvert? He said, oh, to a fault. I can't stand around crowds. I can't be around people. My anxiety goes off the charts. He said, I get nervous. I break out in sweats. He said, man, it's I, I take medicine. He said, as popular as you are in the world, he said, you, people would have no idea. He said, but he said, that's how it is today. It was even worse in grammar school and high school. He said, I didn't do anything. When it was time to graduate, he said, man, all I knew to do was to be a baker. And then by chance, I meet Richard Burton. And he says, then the whole world changed. I told my parents, I want to I be an actor. And I, I remember somewhat like what they were telling me. He said, paraphrasing, he said, you know, you can be successful or not in the world, but will you be significant in the world to come? He said, so I started getting bit parts in plays, thinking, man, I just don't want to be a baker. So he said, my first movie was Death Comes to Me. Huge hit. I can see that. It's kind of like where this homily is going. Death comes to me. <laughs> and so as a result of it, he goes from death comes to me. He goes to give me a cigarette, just as popular as the first one. And then he gets his big break, a bridge too far. He said, man, then the world opens up. He said, next thing you know, I'm in Zorro. He says, I get another break in the action. I do Legends of the Fall. I get Meet Joe Black. I was in that one. You know, I didn't memorize 100 of these things, right? You know that, right? Okay. And then subsequently, man, he, he plays Pope Benedict in The Two Popes. He, he plays Pope Benedict in The Two Popes. He's Hannibal Lecter. Wow, Lord. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter? Silence of the Lambs. That's right. That's right. You know, Philip Anthony Hopkins, right? You know what's amazing is they interviewed him, right, and talking to him, the same interviewer, and they were talking to him about, well, what do you do for vacation if you... He said, what do you do? He said, I get in my car and I drive from one coast to the other. I stop every so often in, in a town and I just, I like meeting people, but only briefly, so I can get in my car and I can leave. He said, but when I, they come to recognize me, i got to leave because it's, it's, I can't take it. He said, but they usually don't recognize me as much, but today it's gotten harder. And he said, so would you sit down and have lunch with me? And he said, well, I would, but, you know, it's just, it's just me and you. He said, well, if you would have lunch with me, he said, would you have lunch with Hannibal Lecter? And he said, no, because it depends on what he's eating, right? <laughs> True story. My brother and sister in Christ, you know what turns Anthony Hopkins to make him who he is? AA. He said, man, I was an atheist and a drunk. I go to my first AA meeting, and the first there, if you had ever realized, that half of the steps in the AA meeting have to do with God. He said, that's when the world became significant. That I may be successful in the world, but I need to start doing things in the world that are significant for the world to come. That is exactly where that gospel is. The good Lord is talking and telling the Pharisees, yeah, you're successful in the world, but what I'm about to do is significant because it's going to change this man and hopefully the people that listen to him so that they will be prepared for the world to come. Now stop, stop, stop. You're first century Jews. You need to know these things. My brother and sister in Christ, remember this. As a, as a blind person, he's been blind for almost 30 years of his life that we know of. When the good Lord spits into the ground, you're a Jew. You know that in the book of Genesis, written by Moses, Charlton Heston, you know that at the end of the day, when they, he created man from the ground, Adam, meaning man, he spit into the ground to form him. So when he does that act, he's trying to get them to make the correlation that this is how it was in the beginning, and I'm doing it yet again. And then he puts the mud on him and then tells him to go to the Pool of Salaam. The Pool of Salaam is not down the street. 
It's a couple blocks away. So imagine a blind man walking to Siloam and people who can see following him. A blind man's walking, leading people who can see. That's the point. My brother and sister in Christ, and listen to what happens to this man that's blind. The first time he sees him, he's a prophet. The next time he sees him, he's a holy man of God. The next time he speaks to Christ, he calls him Lord, Adonai. In other words, he's now become significant. In other words, he gets it. It's not about the world. It's about what I do in the world for the world to come. Which world are you playing for? This one or the one to come? Ask yourself, is it successful for this world or will it be significant in the world to come? Listen, all of our great players carry the same cross. Imagine you're Saul. You're successful in the world. But the problem is the world's got an end date. You came in on this day, you're going home on this day. You came in on this day, and you're going home on this day. It's non-negotiable. It's already been determined. So he's asking, like Saul, yeah, you did successful things here, but it's not significant till you become Paul. Now you're playing for the world to come. It would be the same way, I tell you what, it would be the same way with Lazarus. Lazarus is the wealthiest man of his day, bar none. Every king, every ruler, Pharisee, Sadducee, everybody wants to be friends with Lazarus. He's got more money he knows what to do with. He's got land, he's got vegetables, he's got grapes, he's got, he's got manufacturing, he's got distribution, he's got sales. So as a result of it, everybody wants to be his friend. But as successful as he is, it's not until he dies twice that he becomes significant. Because the fact that the good Lord raised him on the fourth day, go back and read scripture, the good Lord waits to the fourth day to raise him because the Jews believe you can resuscitate somebody up until the third day. So the good Lord is making sure that everybody there knows there's no, there's no hide and seek. My brother in Christ, listen to what I'm telling you. When Lazarus rises from the dead, he now becomes significant. And did you know, according to tradition in the saints, he leaves everything in him and Martha and Mary. He goes to be a bishop in another country to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Successful or significant? Well, here you and I sit 2,000 years later. Is what you and I doing today successful or significant my brother christ listen to me in everything you do no matter how trivial it may be it all boils down to is it this world you're playing for or the world to come you get an email a text message a phone call you go to a meeting what how you acted the words you chose the disc your discretion or lack thereof is it successful for you in the world did it make you more money were you able to buy the extra things you need more clothes more shoes I need a bigger camp, I need a bigger boat, I need a higher phone, I need a better computer, or is the money that you got playing for the world to come? My brother and sister Christ, that's where the good Lord's going. They will know it from the light that comes from you. In everything you do, you got to ask yourself, remember this, you are never neutral to Christ. You're either walking towards him or you're walking away from him. You are never neutral from an email, text message, how you go to work, how you drive your car, how you do things, how you don't do things. When you stand in line at Walmart. Mother Christ, the words that come from your mouth, the thoughts that enter your head, is what you're doing successful or significant? Will it bring you closer to the kingdom of heaven? My brother said, Christ, listen to this, true story. I go to do a Seder meal with a rabbi so people can come to understand the nuances between a Passover meal and our meal, if you will, the Eucharist. And as a result of doing the meal, a man comes up to me and says, you know, I got to tell you, I've never heard that before. I never studied Christ as a Jew. He said, I went to Catholic schools my whole life. He said, I've never heard this. He said, do you know anything about annulment? Regretfully, I do. And so as a result, man, we started talking. Well, he started, now I gotta tell you, he takes his company public. He takes a company public, it's no small task. He at one time was one of the top 10 businessmen in the United States. Successful, my brother's Christ. Man, if money is the measure of success, then I gotta tell you, 10 times over, and as a result of it, we get his, his annulled. He says, you know, Father, I would like to do something different, something significant. He said, how can I help you? I said, I tell you what. He said, I know you're a Marian. He said, so let's do something to Mary. He said, I tell you what. If you promise to pour the slab and put a roof on it, I'll build anything in between. Our adoration chapel. My brother and sister in Christ, when you walk in our adoration, child, truly we've been blessed by God. 
But more importantly, there's flowers in that back corner that are designated for him. And I ask our parishioners every time you enter the chapel to say a prayer for him. So now I ask you, of all the things that Bill and Wendy Bourne did, of all the things they did, how more significant was that? So now every time you enter the chapel, he passes away one year from the day I meet him. Storm comes, knocks him off his four-wheeler, and he passes. Can I tell you, tell me that Adoration Chapel doesn't pay dividends now. For every soul that enters, for every knee that enters, for every prayer that's prayed, for every hour spent, for every minute we go, for every time we enter we pray one prayer for him, tell me it doesn't help mitigate what he owes. That is significant. Nothing else can help now. So I ask you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are you playing for this world or the world to come? Is what you're doing with your car and your monies and things, is it for this world or the world to come? Is what you're doing successful or is what you're doing now significant? In everything you do, not just money, but in every aspect of your life. Because if you're not doing it in every aspect of your life, you're surely not going to do it with your finances. So it doesn't change at the end of the day. On the day you and I die, the nanosecond you and I die, the nanosecond, while everybody's around the bed, and as sorrowful and as painful as it is, you may be praying for the soul of the deceased, but I guarantee you, there's one person around that bed, he's thinking about them golf clubs. That's right. The other one's thinking about that car. The other one's thinking about, well, I wonder what they're going to do with that money. Somebody's thinking about the house. Meanwhile, you and I have already been judged. It's immediate. So my brothers in Christ, I ask you, now what's more successful or significant? My brother in Christ, I leave you with this. Think about it before you act, before you speak, before you react. Thoughts lead to words. Word leads to actions. Actions form habits. Think before you speak. Is it walking towards him or away from him? Will it make you successful or will it make you significant? Amen? Amen. I've been yelling for 20 minutes. Amen. Amen. There you go. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand.